Hello and welcome to Thought for November the 15th. Our readings are Nehemiah chapter 1 and 2, Hosea chapter 12 and Colossians chapters 3 and 4. And our thought is, Servants who delight to fear your name. Today we begin to read the inspiring words of Nehemiah. They are inspiring because they show his faith and absolute commitment to serve God and the wondrous power of prayer in carrying out his commitment. Earlier, inspired by Ezra, the temple had been restored, but Jerusalem itself was still in ruins and the people were living in very difficult conditions. Nehemiah is a cupbearer, a very responsible and entrusted position in service to the Persian king. Visitors from Jerusalem bring him news of its great trouble and shame verse 3. As a result, he says, I sat down and wept and mourned for days and I continued fasting and praying. Verse 4. He reflects on God's saving power in the past and prays, O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name. Verse 11. Do we delight to fear? That is, be in heartfelt awe of what God must be. And for us, as we read today in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, to have that attitude toward the Son at the right hand of God. Obviously, Nehemiah's relationship with God was real, is ours. Nehemiah is cupbearer to the king, a very trusted position in protecting the king from any effort to poison him. His spirit of distress is evident as he serves the king. And the king asks, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? Chapter 2, verse 2. Nehemiah tells him of the news that has come to him, and the king responds, What are you requesting? Verse 4. Nehemiah reacts, Imagine it. So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your certain servant has found favour in your sight, that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves, that I may rebuild it. Verses 4 and 5. How instantaneous his prayer must have been, and how he must have marvelled and felt humbled by the answer. He is sent to Jerusalem, and on arrival, I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good of the work. Verse 18. May the hand of our loving Heavenly Father be upon us for good. That is, the good of working in his vineyard. And this includes using whatever talents we have to rebuild the faith of any whose walls have fallen down. Or are collapsing. The tragedy is, as we read in Proverbs, those without self-control are like a city broken into and left without walls. Chapter 25 and verse 28. And as we leave you on that reading, we thank you for being with us again to open up the pages of God's Word, remembering that that Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you.